Do you guys ever wonder why there are so many college athletes changing schools? Yeah, me too. So today I'm here to give you a speech about uh, the transfer portal. So first we'll be giving what it is the transfer portal and how it works, and then why a college athlete may want to enter in the transfer portal, and then why I think the transfer portal should not be allowed in college sports. So first let's go over what is a transfer portal. The transfer portal is a database that shows coaches of the colleges player, that players want to transfer from their current school. And uh, how it works is all the, all the athletes, all they got to do is go up to their uh, school and coaches and tell them they want to enter in the portal. But once they say they want to enter in the portal, they got 48, 48 hours to officially enter in the portal. And But although they enter in the portal, that doesn't mean they're transferring schools necessarily. They can just look at their, um, they, they can look at the options they're given. So they can look at other colleges that offer them or offer them to come to their college, and then they can still go to back to their school that they're at. It just depends on like what they're what they're thinking, and then and then you're probably wondering why a student want, would want to transfer. Well, according to ESPN.com, uh, the number one reason of athletes transferring is playing time at their colleges. So if like a athlete thinks they're not getting enough playing time or like doesn't play at all and they think they're like better than the starters or whatever, they would uh, decide they would want to enter in the portal and go to a school that they might get more playing time at. And then also and the second reason is coaching change, staff changes. So if you're getting recruited by a coach uh, that recruited you and they end up getting fired during your like your high, or not your high school your college season, uh, you might want to rethink about like what what you want to do if, or you might follow the coach if they left. You might follow them to their new college. So yeah, and those are also some reasons why they that you want to enter in the portal. Oh, and also if like a, an example of. Uh, someone entering the transfer folder for a different reason is Wandell Robinson. He went to Nebraska, but his mom got really sick and he wanted to stay with her and they lived in Kentucky. So he decided to enter in the portal and go back to his hometown and play for Kentucky for a season. And then, uh, so now let's talk about why I think the portal shouldn't be a thing. So the portal, so in 2019 when it started, uh, 1,000 college athletes entered in the transfer portal. And then in 2022, it tripled. It went to 3,000 college athletes entering the portal. And according to 24-7 sports, 20% of uh, teams' uh, starters were from the transfer portal. So this means that that players that are getting not getting playing time and they decide to stay at their school are still going to be pushed back in the roster because you have players that are better than them transferring in from other schools and will start over them. So this will lead to uh, athletes, like a bunch, way more athletes transferring in the future and more money getting deal, uh, handed to colleges for NIL deals and uh, then more than it should be. And basically um, players will already be earning money in college, which I think is a bad idea because they – they pretty much think they were like already made it kind of into the NFL, like the big leagues, but they haven't been making like, uh, yeah, they haven't made it into the big leagues quite yet though. So this is why I think uh, the NI, I mean, the trench portal is a bad idea for college athletes or college sports. Mm -hmm. But to recap of what we, what we learned today, uh, we learned about uh, what is the trench portal and how it works. And then also, why an athlete may want to enter in the portal, and then finally why I think the trench portal is a bad idea for college sports.